Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Duplicate 3D, that's the note we're going to focus on. Uh, so no particles, which may come as a surprise. So we're going to recreate the first example. So let's drag in a fusion composition, drag it out a bit until it's a bit longer and let's then head into the fusion tab. So in the fusion tab, we'll start by adding a text plus node, like so. And then, uh, not that important, but uh, on my computer, it's better to make it a bit smaller for performance reasons. So I divide it by four. You could also do it by two or whatever, right? And let's add some text, vector, hacker terminology or something. And let's change the font. And then let's change the, well, the font size to something a bit bigger and let's change the color to a nice amber, retro and all that. Um, and then once we've done that, we'll focus on the right on property. All right, so we're going to animate that. So let's set the first keyframe at time zero and then head over to something like frame 20 and let's do the full right on. So the end is at one. Then move over to 120 and set another keyframe. And then in the spline editor, we're going to make it repeat. So let's select all the points we created, all the keyframes, and let's then set, oh, let's do it properly, and let's set a loop, like so. There we go. And now you will see it will constantly loop. So it will write on, stay stationary for a bit, and then write on again. However, we'll make one more change. We'll fade in some opacity. So let's head over to the, I think it's called the style tab. There it is. And let's keyframe the opacity. So let's start at one, at frame zero, animate, then move over a bit forward to something like 110, set another keyframe, and then to 120, and let's set it then to zero. Final thing we need to do is to make this bit loop as well. So let's select all the keyframes as we did before and then hit the loop button. And there we go, done. So let's have a quick look to see what it looks like. Bang. It all works. So let's off switch off the spline editor and go to the next step. So the text plus node will be fed into a 3D image plane like so, and let's display that in viewport two, and let's not do anything with it further. So, and now we get to the exciting part, the duplicate 3D node. So let's go in there and let's set the number of copies to six, and then set an off X offset, so that we can a nice row of words. Uh, we're not quite done yet. Right? because it is all basically happening at the same time. So if we play this, we see it building up at the same time. That's not what we want. So we set a time offset. And if we play it then, let's go a bit forward, and there you go. Then you've got a time offset for each copy of 10 frames. So then we get into the Jitter tab. And there, let's change the Z to something like 6. And now we see it a bit distributed into Z space. Again, it starts moving into the directions we wanted to move into. Let's also set a tiny bit of an X jitter offset uh, so that, well, we'll see later on that not everything is too aligned. So next one up is another duplicate 3D. Now we're going to duplicate into the sort of vertical direction. So let's set another six copies here and let's then change the Y offset, as you can see here. Okay, so let's set to 0 0.5. Okay, that looks good, but let's have a look and play this. All right, and we can see here that everything is basically changing at the same time. Again, well, in the vertical manner. So here we need to set the time offset as well. If we play it again, and we get more of a random feel. So let's go into the Jitter tab and set the offset for, or the translation for Z as well to six. And now it's nicely distributed. And let's add in for good measure, a bit of 
uh, X translation jitter. You could do a bit of Y as well, by the way. And that is looking good. Uh, because everything has been moved to the right a bit, uh, because of the duplicate 3D, we can move it back to the left by adding a transform 3D. Now you could do that in the image plane itself as well, but I think it's pretty neat there. And let's then add a merge 3D. Actually, let's do it the other way around. That still works. Uh, it, it makes it a bit neater later on. So let's select them all and then copy and make a bunch of instances. So the benefit here is that you can only have to change it in one node, the original node, and then it will automatically propagate to the other ones. And we're all going to add them all to the Merge 3D. So they will all come together. Now we do need to de-instance the text because we want that to vary, like so. And let's change it to something else, like, I don't know, encryption. And you can see it overlaying the other words, uh, but we'll fix that later. Let's uh, change it for uh, this one as well. Let's change that to SQL injection. Now here's something uh, interesting, well, something you need to be aware of. It is really right to the board. So let's de-instance the size here as well. So that we'll only change it for that no node and so that it fits. And now let's quickly do it for all the other ones as well. So I'm speeding it up a bit. Now for this last one, I want to have a different color. However, I can't do it over here. I need to go to the style tab and de-instance the color group. It's a bit weird, but I have to do it there. So change it to red and let's have a look here. Okay, so now we're going to fix that position issue. So let's go into the Jitter tab and de-instance the random seed for the first duplicate. And do the same one for the other one, right? So you get the different random seed, so therefore a different position. So you need to play around a bit. And once done, we need to do that for all, so that they all, will all sort of occupy a unique space. So there we go. That is looking good. Bit of tweaking. That's it. And let's have a look at the results. And it's looking pretty good. But you see a few things here. It's all sort of happening at the same time. So what we need to do as well is to go back to the main tab and de-instance the time offset. So that for each sort of word, the offset will be a bit different. Otherwise, all these ones would be going at approximately the same time. So we do that for the other nodes as well. And you could also do it for the second uh, duplicate for the, for the, for the y-axis, but it's not absolutely necessary. But see how it works for you. Okay, so that is looking pretty good. Uh, however, the axis denies, I want that to sort of go off and on a bit rather than having a write on. I just want it to blink. So let's de-instance the write on because we don't want this to be removed for the other nodes, right? So let's quickly do that. There we go, de-instance. And then once done, we can safely remove all the keyframes, remove, remove all. There we go. So now it will just stay stationary and we can make it blink. To do so, let's go to the style tab and let's work on the opacity. So we already had some keyframes, of course, originally. So we want to remove them, but first the instance. There you go. Then we can remove all the keyframes and start over again. So at frame zero, we'll set it to one. And then at frame, what is it? 20 or so, let's set it to zero. At 40, again, set it to one. And then we go into the spline tab. And as we did before, so I'll first deselect all and let's ensure we work on the right one. There we go. Select them all and hit then the loop button. There we go. And now we can see that one blinking. My, my computer is a bit slow, but you can see it's uh, it's happening. So let's close that spline tab 
And we're really nearly done with um, the main effect. So let's add another Merge 3D and display it in Viewport 2. And then we'll add a camera in. So let's hook that up. And then let's copy over the viewpoint from the viewport to the camera. All right. And let's remove the rotation. And then let's view the camera. Okay, it's looking pretty good. So then we can work on the animation, very simple animation, just on the uh, just the Z translation or Z translation. So let's animate that. We'll start right at the back. Let's move over to frame 200 and let's move it forward in Z space, Z space. There we go. So if we were to play this, now it seems to speed up a bit, but it's just my computer. Right, once it's rendered out, it would be fine once it caches. So let's then add in a renderer 3D and display that. Let's get rid of those, the checker underlay, and let's set it to the OpenGL renderer. Now we don't need to have any lighting, so we leave that. But what we do want to do is add some accumulation effects. But before we do that, let's quickly show you guys something. So if we display the merge in the viewport one, you can actually see the focal plane, right? You need to select that. And now you can see what the camera would focus on and what we would be out of focus. So let's um, enable it. And there we see that we need to up the quality a bit. Let's also decrease the uh, the amount of TOF blur or DOF blur as well. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, maybe maybe 0 0.04 instead. Yeah, that seems to be the right amount to my liking at least. Now finally we hook it up to the media out and we're nearly done. But something I should have pointed out at the start, and it has to do with the clip length in, on the edit tab. That needs to be suitably long, longer than your uh, required animation. So that has to do with the time offset in the duplicate 3D node. So each instance or each copy would have an offset of 10 here, times six is 60 frames. Uh, and then on top of that, there's another duplicate 3D node after that, that would introduce additional delay. So depending on your specific settings, you, you would need to increase your clip length, right? So not just the animation length, but a buffer on top of that. So in my case, I just dragged it out to whatever it was, you know, uh, what is it, 600 frames or so. Just bear that in mind, because otherwise you'll see, see some weird things happening. Now that was it for the main effect, but there were some sort of blinking lights at the back and I'll quickly show you guys how I did that. So what we'll do is we'll start with a fast noise, a very versatile tool, and we'll display that and tweak the settings a bit. And we crank up the contrast and we lower the brightness and we get these really sparse spots. Now how do we turn these into sort of squares? Right, because there are now little dots. Um, we can use the resize for that. And that's a, a very handy little tool. So if we divide the width and height by 40, we get a very small one. But if we then resize it back to the original one, 1920 by 1080, then we don't see anything at all. But what happens when we change the filter method from linear to nearest neighbor? And let's do it for the other one as well. And bang. There we've got our little squares. And if we play that, this is what could become blinking lights. Uh, but we want to give it um, a bit of glow as well. So first let's set a nice color, maybe some red or, and I think in the original example I had two colors, I combined two fast noises. Uh, this one I'll set to yellow and then we basically piped it into an image plane. So if we then show that, 
There we go. And then we can change the settings a bit for the size or the scale even. Make it a bit larger. Well, X, Y, is it needs to be even larger, maybe 15. And let's pipe that into the merge. And it's displayed the merge in the viewport. Like so. And it's a bit, you can see there at the back. Uh, then we would need to uh, rotate that. So we let's add a transform 3D. And let's rotate it around the Y axis. There we go. And if we then offset it a bit to the left, and there we've got our lights. However, we want to give them a bit of glow, but we don't want to give the text a glow. So what we need to do is pipe that into its separate merge and have a separate renderer. So we add the merge 3D and pipe the transform into the merge 3D and pipe the same camera into it so that it follows the same animation. And then we add our renderer uh, we'll set it to, um, we'll display it and set it to OpenGL. And we don't need to really add the accumulation effects. We could do it, but it is so in the background, uh, background and we're going to blur it anyways. So let's add a blur node. And let's uh, increase the blur a bit, quite a bit. And then add a soft glow. So that's looking good. Let's maybe increase the gain a tiny bit. There we go. And all we need to do now is basically merge those two. So what we can do is pipe the renderer into the soft glow. So that essentially becomes the foreground. It creates its own merge. And there you go. And then we need to decouple it from the media out and attach the merge one, the last merge to the media out. Let's get rid of the alpha overlay or the checker underlay even sorry and there we go we see our lights um you know in the original example we had i had two of them and i was a bit more careful about the placement but you get the gist so uh, that was all there was to it i hope you guys enjoyed this and see you next time take care bye bye